Hey guys, this is the 120 Prado with about 230,000 Ks that's got the loud tapping in the engine. Uh, he's gone and put the BFG KOs on. It's got the roof rack, the awning, the ARB bull bar. So he must have spent some money in an ARB. So look, yeah, now that's the ARB. It's got some King's lights on it. The carbon winch, right? But we're just gonna go through a few problems to help him and you avoid the vehicle burning to the ground or breakdowns, okay? Now this isn't about the engine. There is a problem with the engine. There'll be more videos on that. This is everything around the engine, okay? So maybe we should start around this side here and see what we can see. I have not yet done an inspection. There's a few things I've noticed, but I'm just gonna have a quick look around here to see if there's anything else uh, that's a problem. All right, so he put a battery tray in Went to ARB for a dual battery and they put the battery over there anyway. You just need to know. I'm just giving you the information from the client. Um, okay, see how clean the engine looks? Look, it's not kind of stained, it's clean, it's original. It's a good one. 230k is low K for a 120, and it's at a point in time that you could replace the injectors. Now, have you seen a problem? You know, like. You know, I always say anything red, positive from the battery. Let's just quickly recap for the people that don't know. In an automotive battery system, generally, all vehicles, generally all, right? So maybe not all, generally. Generally, most vehicles, almost all, are negative earth. And that means you've got a positive and a negative. The positive is the red one. The negative is the black one. The black is the earth. It's connected to the car. See, black, see the wire goes to the body. And there's other earths. The whole vehicle is ground, black, earth, whatever you want to call it, okay? That's the black. Just think as the whole car is a black. So that means, does everybody know that if you touch a piece of wire from one side of the battery to the other, it shorts out, it makes sparks? You know, your welding type thing, you know? Well, you're not unless you probably need a few more volts, a few batteries. But that's another story, another video. But you don't want to connect the two together. And that's why you disconnect the negative first and connect it last so you then then you've disconnected the whole vehicle because if you put a spanner from the positive here and it touches something else it's going to make sparks because the negative is still connected where if you put the spanner from the negative and it touches anything else other than a positive it's not going to matter right so if the whole vehicle is a negative right it's black we don't want any of these red positive wires which i can see everywhere there's a circuit breaker hanging dangling around down there, zip tied to a wiring loom, of which we have a fair idea on the other side, right? That's, see those, right in the middle of the picture, you can see that silver block, that's a circuit breaker, right? It's probably something to do, usually for driving lights or whatever. Know, could be a brake control, I'm not going to go into what it is at the moment, it doesn't matter. Circuit breaker is like a fuse, it's a temporary disconnect because it's safety and it needs to come back on again type thing. So if you've got a short, it'll go off, but it'll come on again. But the wire that comes from the battery to the circuit breaker at that side right there, there's no, there's no fuse, there's, no, there's nothing, right? That is your fuse right there and it's zip tied. Sharp metal edges, by the way, as well, I'll just mention, right? You know, see these you know, edges here and here? And see that round there, that's what I'm talking about. That's a, how close is it the body? It's a finger width from the body of the vehicle. If I push that down, that wire, right, enough, I'm not doing it, that's gonna short out, and that could cause the vehicle to burn to the ground. So, again, absolutely atrocious automotive electrical setup. Now, you know, I do stuff so it's reliable. I'm not making the most neatest whatever. It's pretty good, I know what's where, and it's safe. I make it safe. I make it neat. This is terrible. You've got wires hanging down there. You've got wires over here. You've got bloody fuses over there, which is good, you know, that you've got fuses. I don't know what they were. Well, I didn't. You need to kind of do it yourself or really understand what's what because if you're out on the tracks and you've got problems, you need to know what's what. But if you do it right, you don't need to know what's what. So take it to Kim and he'll sort it out, right? But the problem is, see the positive of the battery here, right? So we've got the, the red. Okay, that's the insulation. But what do you reckon? There's any chance it can rub through? Put your hand up if you think it can rub through, you know, can it rub through somewhere? Let's have a look. Let's go around here and have a look where it goes through. Oh, look, corrugated split tubing where it goes through. This is actually awesome. Look at that. To my surprise, you can see that corrugated split tubing there, which is extra protection. So if it rubs there, that's good. But look at these red ones here. There's nothing on them, is there? All right. See these? All right. And they're quite tight, actually. You know, they could be, oh, they just pulled that tight. 
Again, more of these circuit breaker top setups here. There's two more of those right there. Not near touching anything, but understand that'll be the wires that come around here. They wrap around the battery and they go straight to the circuit breaker. So that's a live connection right there, right? Uh, and these wires, they're pulled tight. You're gonna need a circuit breaker because they're pulled tight against the metal down there, right? Just there. So we're picking on the electrical of this car so that you can see how important it is and, and understand what the problem's gonna be. So that's really cool. They've got the corrugated split tubing going through the hole. I'm happy with that. If it's not rubbing anywhere else, that's fine. I'd run it all the way because it's, what is it? A few bucks for a bag for a few meters, you know, it's like, we're talking about less than 10 bucks to save your car burning to the ground. You know, it's a no-brainer. So what we see over here, right, that's better. Because look, you know, this stuff's tough, the corrugated split tubing. It's really tough. But then when we look down here, look, zip tied to the chassis without any protection. So that's just going to wobble around down there for years to come, right? Any fuse? No, there's no fuse. Hang on. Could be one. No, it's not here. No, it's corrugated split tubing. No fuse, right? I don't even care about the fuse. You can... People say, oh, you got to have a fuse. Well, you don't got to, because if you've got a good connection and you've routed it the right way and there's corrugated split trim, there's no way it's going to rub through. You don't need a fuse then, do you? Because there's no way. But if there's a chance that you've done a dodgy job and it could rub through, like this one, this one needs a fuse, because see what I'm talking about down here, right? This is a brand new bull bar and winch installation, but for years, if it's ever going to get used, it's got to go and rub around so they can rub there. <coughs> Excuse me, you know. More rubbing down along the bottom there. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting a bit too excited. I should have had a drink before I started this video. Before I started this lecture? Yes, it's a lecture. That's what it is, right? Look over here, right? Remember what I said? It's a new installation, new winch and everything. Look, that stuff is really thick. It's probably going to take a long time to rub through. But I can't guarantee that. I can guarantee you that corrugated split tubing stick you can use a bit more than a short section like that fill the hole anything that's not a negative i don't care about the black one the black one like i said the whole body the bull bar everything's already earthed now if you put a positive of the battery to this bull bar it's going to arc up it's the red and the yellow ones right corrugated split tubing all the way so you're going to have to redo that and disconnect all your batteries and everything while you do it after you watch this video Everybody needs to go and rethink their auto electrical because it's just not worth the risk, okay? So many people get lucky, but we do have vehicles come in and I go, because they, they've run the wire across the back here, which is okay if you want to do that, like that one there. That's zip tied up pretty well, but some people run the, for the dual battery, the wire around the back here, and they don't secure and it rubs through on hot things or it rubs through and I've seen all these things that are all burnt and I'm like oh I know what happened here and of course I ask and they go yeah how'd you know and I go well you know and then you know you get the story now it's happened to a few people it's not just you know if we've seen a few there's a there's a lot of cars we don't see I can only do what we can do here you know so that's the electrical side of it I think we're gonna have to um, go and have a bit of a pick on something else now we're about done on electrical now you know one of my pet hates is you know the battery terminal it's not pushed all the way down loosen it off a bit more push it down so that when you tighten up it's not just tight see see there that gap there that's tight because that's squashed together you know it's you run out of thread but it's not tight around here so that it doesn't come off because it's not pushed all the way down battery terminals they're tapered Couple more turns of the screw loosening, push the bloody thing down, and then tighten it up. Is it that hard, you know? Anyway, I've got a light here, I'm trying to show you stuff, but this one again, no, it's not all the way down either. You can have a look for yourself. So same sort of situation, and then one day they'll come along and they'll undo this to do whatever, and the whole thing will twist on the post and start working loose. So I can get, I can just, there's about three or four mil under that, right? There is, you can see it through. You can see straight through there underneath that bottom section right at the end of my fingernail there underneath that yeah it's about three mil it's got to go down anyway about done whinging on battery stuff you get the gist of it right quick reminder for those people that watch don't push on this or lean on this because you'll snap it right now i think we'll just make this video whinging about electrical and we'll call it a day let me just have a quick look if there's anything else electrical and then i'll do a separate video to whinge and whine about other stuff right now this is just an auto electrical catastrophe there's fuses and relays and stuff everywhere 
You know, who'd know? Like, so you got a breather there. That's for the a winch breather. Bloody, these must be good winches if they need to have a breather that goes all the way up over there. Like, whatever, you know? Can't you just have a hole at the bottom to drain any water that gets in out? And that's it. And no water doesn't travel up. Everybody, remember when you were a kid and you played in the bath, didn't you have a glass or a cup and you put it upside down and push it in? Water doesn't go into it till you tip it sideways. So if you've got a winch, like a starter motor, right? Genuine Toyota starter motor got drain holes at the bottom drain hole drain holes whatever water probably won't get in but if it does because it can there's other places you know moving parts that holes things need to go. if it does then it just drains out the bottom why can't we just do that with a winch i know winch some winches do that i don't know what to go with it complicated anyway now i'm just whinging about winches because you know whatever car wreckers as well because it makes people take vehicles places they wouldn't normally go because they've got a in winchable invincible winchable anyway look at this electrical it's just a mess. Look at these wires on the back of this headlight thing, right? I don't even know if you can see that. They're hanging out as well, so I don't know how they're gonna go, right? That's what I'm talking about here. I'm not even touching them, right? That is not our job. Our job is the engine. A separate job is gonna be fix up the electrical. So, hope you get my drift, guys, again. I'm trying to help you here. I'm not just here to have a whinge, right? I do like helping people, so I hope you take it on board. Please be very careful who you take your vehicle to for electrical work. And there's gonna be another video on this one. And you know what? Uh, having a big reputable business that does a good job can be a good thing. But if you've got a big reputable business and you wreck in people's cars, sometimes you're gonna get named and you should know better. So in the next video, they're gonna get named. So now's the time to subscribe, turn the bell on. Please give us a thumbs up if you uh, thought there was some useful information within this video thumbs up subscribe bell on and uh next video with the next problems coming your way soon